Hey guys, Alvin Blocks here. In this video, I'm going to be reviewing the top plugins that I use on a daily basis in Roblox Studio. Very, very useful plugins. I'll be leaving a link to all of them in the description. But let's get started with the first plugin, which is Row Tasks. And Row Tasks is created by Voided Blade. What it allows you to do is have notes in your script, which then appear in this window, so you can jump to certain areas in your script. Let me give you a quick example. So let's just say we have a script. What I can do is do a normal comment, but then if I do two arrows like this and then a comma and sorry, not a comma, a colon. After that colon, I can write a message and I could say this part is for the intermission. And then later on, I could say something else. So just describing what this part of the script does, etc. And when you have code in between here, you can your script's going to be really long, so you might forget where a certain part is. So what it allows you to do is when you're out of the script and you want to quickly jump to a certain piece of your code, you can just click it and it will take you to that line. If I was to put a load of spaces, so let's imagine that they're, they're quite far apart, it will jump to the intermission or if I click down here to go to the game loop, it's going to take me straight there. So a great plugin if you have lots of code and lots of scripts and you keep forgetting where certain parts of your code are located and you just need to quickly go to them to change something or, or fix a bug. So really useful. Next plugin is the Tool Grip Editor by Clone Trooper 1019. Now you may have come across this problem before where you're creating a tool and then it doesn't fit on the character correctly. So the Tool Grip Editor lets you change this. So when you click it, it will say select a tool, edit tool grip. What it will do is it will place a player's arm uh, on the tool and you can move this little green ball and that will move the the player's arm relative to the gun so you can see in the window that the actual grip of the tool is changing so if I wanted to actually change the rotation of the tool I could do that so it could be pointing in your face and then when I'm done I just need to um, click away deselect the tool and the changes have been applied you can see it's pointed in our faces just like we just positioned it with the tool grip editor. So there you go. Great plugin if you're designing tools or weapons and you just can't make it fit on the character's arm correctly. Okay, next plugin is the data store editor. Now this one is a lifesaver. You may not be using data stores yourself, but when you do, it's very, very useful. So if somebody says that they lost data or their save slot got corrupted or you just want to be kind and give them some money in your game, you can edit their data store without having to write any code. Let me give you an example of how this works. So I'm here in one of my friend's games and I'm going to access his data store by typing in the name of the data store. So this is the name that you give when you call get data store on the data store service. So I'm just going to put mine in here. And I don't need to bother with the scope. I'm going to click on connect. And now I've connected to that place's data store system. I now need to put in a player's key. So each player in a data store will have their own key, which uniquely identifies their data store. So I can put that in and I'm going to change their money. Now I'm going to set this to 1077. Okay, I'm going to click save. And when that is saved, I can just disconnect or I can click this button and the, the player's data store will have been changed. And you can now see that when I join the game, I have 1077 money because it was my data store that I edited. So great plugin if you need to change somebody's data store or even if you're trying to debug your data stores, if it's not saving correctly, you want to check the format, etc. Really useful plugin. OK, next plugin. And this one is a very simple one. It's called load character. I've got the pro version, but I think there's also a light version that's free. When you use it, all you need to do is type in somebody's username. I can put in my own. And then I can click whether you want the R6 version or the R15 version or how the, the player has, has currently set their body to be. And when you click one of those, it will insert that player's character. So great if you want to have some friends in your game or you just want to insert a character to, to play with or test with. Next one that I'm going to show you is get object path. So this is really useful if you're in a script and you want to access an object that's nested within a load of objects and you're too lazy like me to actually get the path of the object. So instead of having to say game.workspace.alvinblocks.leftlowarm.leftwrist.com 
rig attachment. That's a lot of typing. So all you need to do is open up the output window and then just go to the plugin. And there it is, get object path. Boom, it will get the path of the selected item in the Explorer and it will put it in the output. So all you need to do is just copy it and put it into a script. It should work fine just saying workspace. You don't need to say game.workspace um, because that is a shortcut. Right, next plugin that we're going to look at is UI Design by Stellrex. Now, this is a brilliant plugin if you are making GUIs. Now, you may remember uh, Roundify. It's a plugin that I've featured before on the channel, but this is a great way of, of helping you make uh, UI, user interface, if you're not very good at all of that stuff. So let me show you. If I have a UI element, you've got the uh, Roundify feature, which lets you uh, make a frame rounded with rounded edges like this. So I use it quite a lot in UI design. We've also got the drop shadow effect. What that lets you do is apply a nice little shadow to the GUI. I'm going to show you. Click create shadow. Boom. You can also edit that. So if you don't want the shadow to be a stick, you can just change the offset here. Loads of things that you can change. You can also change the color. So we could have a green drop shadow. So really, really nice. We've also got, and this is probably the best feature of it, positioning tools. So you can just quickly position something in the uh, top left corner, top right corner, wherever you want, any corner. Just click the corner you want and click position. Boom. You can have it down here. You can have it in the middle. And you can see it even... Uh, it stays in the middle even if you change the screen size. So that's brilliant because it uses scale. We've also got a class converter. So you could change it to a different element or UI uh, type. So if you wanted to change this to be an image label, you can just click it, click convert, and boom, it's changed. You can make a scrolling frame, boom, changed, or a text button. And it's going to keep the original properties. So it's going to make, it's going to retain its position, its size, etc. So all around great plugin. Uh, you've also got a create UI as well, so you can insert a frame inside a frame. Just a quick way of having to go insert object and search for the thing you want to insert. So very, very, very cool. Well done, Stellrex, and I do recommend you go download this one. Next plugin is a little bit similar to the one we've just looked at by Stellrex in regards to the class converter, but this is called Reclass by Altop. It's a really, really good class converter, and you can use it on other things such as scripts. So you can click convert, and it will say, you need to uh, enable HTTP requests. So you need to go over here, game settings, options, HTTP requests, save. Then you need to go to convert and you can see you can change it to a local script. Boom, it's changed or a module script. So it's going to give you objects that you can change this one to and it's going to keep the same properties. So let me give you an example. If I insert a part, if I wanted to then change it to a spawn location, I'd have to create the part all over again, but I can just click boom change it to a spawn location, which it has, it's changed the class name. So this is now actually a spawn location, but it's kept the color, it's kept the material, the size position, everything has been kept the same, but it has changed its class. So really, really good plugin. But what I love about this plugin is that you can automatically change it. So if you don't want to bother with going to this convert tab, because we're all lazy and we don't want to do that, what it's going to do is it's going to decide the best class to change it to. It's going to, it's going to try and determine what you're going to use it for. So this is a remote event. It can either be a remote event or a remote function. So I click automatic and boom, it changes it to a remote function. And again, it changes it to a bindable function. Sorry, there are four types, remote event, remote function, bindable event, bindable function. It's going to change it to what it thinks is best for you. So it's going to try and guess. Um, so if I click automatic, it's going to change it to a script because we're in server script service. So really, really good plugin. Really do like this one. Well done, Eltob on creating that. We've also got another plugin by Eltob and that is MG. And what MG allows you to do is if you have a decal ID and some of you may know the struggle here, when you upload a decal to Roblox, sometimes the ID won't work and you have to do that thing where you have to subtract one from the ID and you have to keep going back and back and back until you find the correct image ID. This is just a really simple way it does it for you. So if you were to go and find a decal and I've copied one from the Roblox website, if I just paste it in there, what it's done is it's got me the image ID. It's also given me the short RBX asset ID version and it's also given me the long URL as well. All I need to do is just paste this into the image and it's given me the ID which is really, really great. And this is useful when you're scripting and you want to change the ID 
of an image button or an image label or, or a decal object from a script, you would need to write this out. It just gives you a really quick um, URL for you to copy and paste. So great plugin there. I use that. I don't use it that often, but it does come in handy sometimes. So it's a good one to have. Uh, now let's see what else have we got here. This is a good plugin. This is the welding plugin by Aussiepeg because welding can be a, a bit confusing if you're new to Roblox and it can just take a while even for for me, even if I'll just want to weld a couple of things together. Now, what if I didn't want to anchor these parts? Because I want them to fall to the ground. I want them. I want to be able to play with them with the physics, but I want them to all be stuck together, like like Lego blocks. You see that they're welded together. So what this plugin does is it lets you create those welds. So I can go into the weld editor here. This is quite confusing. I don't use this very much, but you can do weld all, and that's going to create a weld, and it's going to basically put all these parts, weld them together so that they're stuck together, but they are not anchored. So great plugin and I do recommend it. Next plugin that we're going to look at is the instance tagging by, I think it's Sweet Architoke, and that is a hard username to pronounce, but the uh, link will be in the description. What it does, and I've done a video on collection service before, so I'm not going to go over it too much. It lets you add tags to objects. So I could say, I could give it a tag called important script. And if I had lots of scripts in the game, I could tag certain ones as being an important script or an important part. And what you can then do is when you've tagged all of your objects that you want to, to have that tag, you can access them all via a script. So that's what collection service is about. And the tag editor just lets you apply those tags to them. So really, really good plug in that. Um, the next plugin is Easy Crop by Onogork. This is a great plugin, again, for user interface. So what this plugin allows you to do is if we head into the image button, click crop, you can see it brings you up a nice little editing window. So you can select a certain part of the image that you that you want to show. So you may just want to crop this decal down or this, this image. And all I need to do is select if I'm going to crop it as a button or a label. So if I want it to be a button, it's going to insert it as an image label. But if I want it to be an image button, it's going to insert that image button for me. You can also flip it. So you can reverse the image on the X or Y axis and you can change the size as well. So if you want it to, to be 10 by 10, boom, just insert it there and it's going to it's going to insert that for you. So really, really great plug in there from Onogor and I do love it. Image size. I'm pretty sure it's the size of the crop window. So you can see if I set it here, there's kind of like a, a, a bit of snapping. But if I was to change the resolution here to something huge, um, you can see it's uh, it's much more and smoother. So there we go. Great little plug in there and very useful for the UI designers out there. That we're going to look at today is Minify. So if you have a script that is really unordered, so let's give you an example here like this and it's just not organized it's not tabbed it's not you know uh, it's not very good what you can do is you can just and click minify and down here this little ui will appear and it says do you want to beautify or minify and do you want to keep it pretty or make the script small or as small as it can be just to save data and make it a little bit more efficient but it's not going to be efficient that you can notice the optimization so i don't recommend doing that i'm going to do keep globals and just do folding now if we preview this look how it's changed the script so it was that before but it's now made it look beautiful like this so create and what it does is it just updates the script it puts a beautified version in there so you can get rid of this original script and use the beautified version but i'd recommend that you do keep the old script just in case something goes wrong and you need to get the old one back so great little plugin there. So we've got one that I've just enabled here because I've got too many plugins on the uh, on the screen here is insert asset and this is by Z Kevin. Now all you need to do is paste an asset ID for an item from the catalog in here, click confirm and it's going to add it into the game. And that way you can just instead of having to look for it in free models or whatever, you've got the the hat added in the game, which is really really awesome. And one last plugin that I'm going to show you is called Words of Encouragement. Now, it's a cool little plugin. It's currently disabled for me. To enable it, though, if you have disabled it, you can go right click on a window and click on Words of Encouragement. So, what this will do is it will insert a player from your friends list with a motivational message. So, this person here leaned 1009 saying, Be proud of your work. They're not actually saying that, but it's been generated by the plugin. 
So pretty cool, it updates every couple of minutes. And it's a nice little thing to, to look at and every time, every five minutes a new one comes up. So it doesn't really help you in any way, but it's a nice cool plugin that's been trending recently and I like it. So, and every time you go into play solo uh, to test your game, a new person will appear as well with a new message. So that's pretty cool, there we go. Um, so shout out to, to those guys. So there we go, they are all the plugins that I use on a regular basis. Let me know if you want to see more of these in the future because I do use more plugins on my other computers as well um, because I don't use this one all the time in development. So I do have more plugins to possibly show you in the future. So let me know if you do like this type of video and give it a thumbs up, let me know that you like it. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new over here for more Roblox scripting videos and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers, bye.